Hello again, doctors, and welcome back to my channel. This video continues our series on parasites and goes over the schistosomes, which are a species of flatworm. They get a dedicated video because of all of the trematodes, they are the most high yield for step. So without further ado, grab some coffee, get comfortable, and let's get started. The trematodes belong to the kingdom Metazoa, so they are multicellular parasitic worms. From there, worms are either round or flat, and the flukes are in the flatworm phylum, or platyhelminth, in the class Trematoda. In my Intro to Parasites video, I went over the mnemonic bill to remember the four systems the flukes infect, blood, intestine, liver, and lung. Today, we are going over the schistosomes, or the blood flukes, which are not only the most high yield for step, they are unique from the rest of flukes in many ways. First, let's start off with what all the flukes have in common. This is the typical image you'll see shown for the flatworms. Most of them have this general structure being obviously flat with sort of this oblong body shape. They'll have anterior and ventral suckers, which are for both feeding and for attachment. And of course they have a gut. However, the majority of their structure is dedicated to the reproductive organs because all of the trematodes except the blood flukes are diagenetic, meaning they're hermaphrodites and have both male and female reproductive organs allowing for self-fertilization. The schistosomes are the exception with a different shape and reproductive cycle, which we will address later on in this video. All of the flukes also share similarities in their life cycles. First off, all of them use the species of snail as their intermediate host, so water or marsh is involved in some way in all of their life cycles. Humans are their definitive hosts in all cases, so they mature and undergo sexual reproduction in us, excreting eggs from various sites. Those eggs then hatch or mature in water and undergo asexual reproduction in their snail hosts, who then excrete out forms, which eventually mature to become infective to humans and the cycle repeats. The rest of what they have in common can be shown by this guy. This is Trematoad Bill, and he's going to demonstrate each fluke's life cycle in humans. As I've said, Bill stands for blood, intestine, liver, and lung. And the flukes are named for the location that they ultimately colonize and live. The schistosomes are the blood flukes. Clonorchis stenesis and the fasciola species infect the GIT and liver, specifically the biliary system. And finally, P. westermanni is the lung fluke. Although they're named for the system where they reside, all the flukes involve all four systems either in their life cycle or their pathology in some way. The blood flukes are on that side alone because as I said, they are the exception. Firstly, as I mentioned, they are not hermaphrodites like the rest. Second is by the route of entry, which is by direct penetration of skin. The rest are ingested orally, so all the rest we ingest. And those are together on that half of the diagram. That's how those involve the GIT is because they are ingested and then migrate either to the biliary tree for clenorches and the fasciolas or to the lung with Western Manny. In this video, we're focusing on the blood flukes, the exceptions, and they are definitely the most high yield for step, so let's dive into some more detail. To start off, the species names are Schistosoma mansoni, Hematomibum, and Japonicum. I used to remember Man Ham Japan. Memory tricks don't always need to make sense, they just need to be memorable, so Man Ham Japan. Another way I kept them in that order is actually by the epidemiology. The epi runs from left to right, or west to east. So Mansoni is found in South America, as well as in Africa, where Hematobium is endemic to. Africa has the highest prevalence of any continent, with almost every fresh body of water contaminated with schistosomes. Japonicum is from, can you guess? Japan, which of course is in the east, on the right. Like all of the trematodes, the intermediate host for the blood flukes is a freshwater snail. And the cycle really begins as eggs are shed in urine or stool, where they hatch once they come into contact with fresh water and look for their snail host. Within the snail, they develop in the tissues, eventually being released and maturing into the infective form, the cercariae. This is a unique feature of the blood flukes because all of the other flukes share the same infectious form called metacercariae, which remember is ingested. The infective form for the schistosomes is cercariae. Now there's a reason why I didn't mention each other phase by name despite having them on screen, and it's because it's really not high yield. The important stages to remember are infective and diagnostic. 
These schistosomes are the exception, so their infective form cercariae, as well as their ability to penetrate skin directly, are some of their traits that are unique from the other flukes. Cercariae is one of two mobile phases that they have, and they swim through fresh water in search of exposed skin to enter via direct penetration. They don't need trauma or abrasions to gain access, they just bore their way in, meaning any person in an endemic area can become infected. We are their definitive hosts, and their cycle in humans begins after entry, where they spread via the blood to the venules of the liver, where they mature into adults. Once they reach adulthood, they become either male or female. They're the only flukes that are not hermaphrodites, so they grow to become a designated sex pair, and they remain together for life. The male body is here and provides the main support and attachment to the walls of veins. The male body cavity also houses the female schistosome, and they remain paired except during periods of egg laying. Once paired, they migrate to the veins of their future homes, where they can remain for years, like up to a decade, and lay eggs, which are meant to be passed in either feces, urine, or both, in order to repeat their life cycle in water. In this case, the eggs being shed are a tool we use diagnostically to determine the species of schistosome present, because each has a different shape. The eggs can be identified by their spines. Mansoni has a lateral spine, and you can see it jutting out here. Remember, it's on the left side, L for left and L for a lateral. Hematobium in the center has a central spine, and Japonicum on the right has no spine. So he's on the right and is round, R and R. Also, the Japanese flag is a circle, so that's another way to remember that he's round. Microscopy of the egg is usually either shown in the vignette of a test question or as part of the answer options, as well as where the specimens were retrieved from, stool or urine. Keeping them in that same order, man, ham, Japan, mansoni on the left with a lateral spine, hematobium in the center with a central spine, and round japonicum on the right. We've gone over how the schistosomes mature in the portal system of the liver until adulthood where they pair and migrate. Mansoni migrates to the mesenteric veins of the GIT, so M and M mansoni to mesenteric, and its eggs are going to be found in stool. Hematobium resides in the venous plexus of the bladder, and its eggs are going to be found in urine. So hematobium goes to the bladder. It's the only one with a B in his name. And finally, japonicum can be found in either location and either sample. In the end, each species of schistosome, after maturation, colonizes veins and feeds on erythrocytes while producing eggs to be passed out of the body. The only two distinguishing features between the species besides where they reside are their epi and the morphology of their eggs. Other than that, the pathologies are the exact same, and the path as well as the pharmacology of schistosomiasis will be covered in a part two video. This was just an intro to the blood flukes. So that is the end of this video. I really hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure you smash that huge thumbs up just down below. Consider subscribing. I'm going to be posting twice a week in this new year. So until next time, good luck studying, and I, of course, will see you on the next one. I'm in love with the shape of you. I'm in love with the things you do.